Greetings, Matinistas. In fact, good morning, Matinistas. I've got good news and bad news for you. The bad news is that it's the last club game before the World Cup break, and it's a 12.30 kickoff, which is really bad news. The good news, though, is that City are at home to Brentford, and I'm here to bring you the match day vlog. <laughs> Now, I really can't stand 12.30 a.m. kickoffs. Yes, of course, I go to the game, but you have to get up early. You can't really have a drink beforehand. Well, I'm not going to have one in the morning because I'm not an alcoholic. And, of course, you have the whole day afterwards without being able to watch 3 p.m. kickoffs, which is unique to the UK. You can watch them everywhere else in the world, but not here. Anyway, given it's a morning game, we're going to do a breakfast segment first. So let's head over to a place I've been itching to try, the Sicilian Northern Quarter. So you might be saying, Mutton, are you mad? It's the middle of November, but it is actually very mild today. I don't know what the temperature is, but it feels warm enough for me to sit outside and have my breakfast with a coat on. Anyway, the teams have come out. Yes, this is how fine I'm cutting it today, but I'm not going to go to the pub afterwards. I'm going to go straight to the ground after my breakfast. For Brentford, Ivan Tony, their star striker, is back in the starting lineup, and City have their big guns out today. Haaland is playing, Foden is playing, Bernardo is playing, Kevin De Bruyne is playing, Cancelo is playing as well. Edison back in goal. So I am actually looking forward to seeing a strong City team giving a great performance to send us into the World Cup today. Brentford, they've had a pretty rough time on the road of late, so I'm fully confident that we're going to get a good win here. However, football's never as simple as that, as proved by the problems we had beating Fulham after Cancelo's red card last week. As always in the morning, I'm taking an espresso with my breakfast. Now, the one I had on Wednesday before the Chelsea game at the Noi Quattro, well, that was absolutely fantastic. Let's see if this gets anywhere near it. Not bad, not bad at all, but I have to say that one at the Noi Quattro was out of this world. But this, Matanistas, is pretty good. Anyway, I'm hungry, hope the food comes soon. So the food has arrived Matanistas pretty quickly as well, which is a good thing given how late it is. It is about 20 to 12 for a 12.30 kickoff. Anyway, down to the table and we have what they call here the full Italian breakfast. To take on the full English breakfast, you have your fried eggs as normal, salami, ham, focaccia bread, which is very Italian, parmesan mushrooms, again, not really English, and mini arancini, which are southern Italian, I don't know how to describe them, the croquettes, I think is the best word, uh, some beef and some pork in a tomato ragu. Not often you get British-Italian fusion, is it, folks? Anyway, we all know what the bread and the eggs taste like. They are properly runny. And we're going to start off with one of the mini arancini. In fact, I'm going to pan down so you can see what's inside them. Can you see there, folks? There's a rich, creamy filling. Mmm, meaty, tomatoey, but also doughy. So this is going to keep you full for a long time, folks. Now, the parmesan mushrooms. I might try making those at home. I'd never thought of doing that. They are quite simply delicious. I think you all know what the salami and the parma ham and the bread are going to taste like, along with the eggs. So, given I'm short of time, I'm going to crack on with this, and I'll see you when I'm done. Well, 
nothing left at all there, swiftly polished off my sinistas. And I must add, the salami was a bit spicy. And the arancini, the sort of round croquettes, they contained a bit of rice and cheese as well. The longer croquettes were actually potato, but anyway, it was delicious. And arancini, if you've never tried them before, you can have them any time of the day. Well worth a try, really tasty snack. So it's now 5 to 12, time to head off to the map, so I'm going to settle up and get the tram. But in the meantime, here's to a city win. Yes, OK, it's a bit odd doing this with a glass of water, but come on city. <laughs> About eight minutes gone and City are playing as if they've got lead in their boots at the moment. Come on, pick up the pace. Well, City's defending all over the place again there, and I have to say that had been coming. What are we doing today? What are we doing? City nil, Brentford won, and I have to say, they are a team that do come at teams. If we were expecting them to sit back like Fulham or Leicester, then we've got it all wrong. Come on, City, pull your fingers out. Well, we could all see the handball from here. I can appreciate the ref might have been a bit unsighted, but let's see what VAR has to say. Mind you, it rarely has anything good to say in favour of City. Only just, just outside the area. Couldn't be much closer, could it? I would say out to the D for a shot, but let's see what De Bruyne does. Just over half an hour in, still 1-0 to Brentford, but City do appear to be playing better now, so let's hope the pressure tells, because Brentford seems to be hanging on a bit at the moment. from Kevin De Bruyne who hadn't hit many good ones today. This one was. I think it was just about flicked on by a county and Phil Foden slammed it into the back of the net. Great time to equalise. In injury time just before half time, City won Brentford one.
So half time, City won, Brentford won, and City really didn't play very well in that half. I thought Brentford did, but we eventually found a way to equalise, and that is always a good time to score. We'll change the half time team talks, and let's hope we can go on and build from there. It's a pretty sloppy defending, not managing the ball well, taking ridiculously wild shots, and of course, the Brentford goal was just old fashioned route one. Okay, they did what they had to do. But City's defence really should have dealt with that. Anyway, onwards and upwards for the second half. I'm not going to even try and get refreshments today because if you remember, I told you on Wednesday for the Chelsea game, it was quick and efficient downstairs. But now I'm back in my usual top tier seat. You have to go down on 35 minutes if you want to drink and be up to the second half. So I'll just wait here, I think. Rather worryingly, Imer Laporte got a whack to the head and he has been down for quite a long time, I'd say about five or six minutes, so obviously we're worried and probably Spain as well. Yes, he has been bandaged up, but good news, looks like he's OK. Well, 75 minutes gone, there'll be quite a lot of injury time at the end, but I have to say, City are looking a bit sloppy again, the final balls are poor, and we've been caught out by a couple of long balls. That's an example, De Bruyne and Haaland have hardly had a look in this game. De Bruyne has played some bad balls, very surprising. Well, everybody's getting a bit taxi here, some have had enough. Still about seven minutes of injury time left, while the Brentford keeper should have been booked ages ago for time wasting. disaster in injury time. Some of our players have not been giving it 100% today. I think they've got World Cup-itis and Brentford are very pacey. They've exposed us in the air and with long balls that they can run onto. To be honest, they should never have got possession and once they did, Bernardo was the last man covering back. Come on, help him! What's happened to all these usual triangles and overloads we get wide? There have been none of them today.
Okay, Matanista, slight change of venue for the post-match wrap. I'm at the Beatniks Republic, also in the Northern Quarter, very close to the Northern Monk where I normally go on Tariff Street. And as you can see behind me, it's another of these what I call craft beer establishments. A lot of their beers today were quite strong, I have to say. I've just gone for their Session IPA which is actually quite light, slightly effervescent and has tropical fruit flavours which is quite surprising. Anyway, on to the football, wasn't that terrible, what a disaster. First of all to congratulate Brentford, they really did play well today. They knew what their plan was and they stuck to it, they used their height well and they used their pace extremely well. I can't actually complain that we've lost to be honest, I mean even when it was 1-1 they'd had some good chances to go ahead. As for City, I don't want to dwell too long on this but they were absolutely shocking today. Even when they got into good positions, there were no overlap triangles around the wings, which we usually do to send low balls over towards the penalty spot. Somebody played a bad ball, or Harlan, he slipped, he wasn't up with the play. De Bruyne was firing in bad balls left, right and centre. I've never seen him play so badly. And everybody was playing so lethargically. Did they have World Cup-itis? I would have brought Grealish on to provide some extra width, and I thought Alvarez provided that extra energy we need, but it was left a little bit late to bring him on. 85th minute, roughly? Okay, so you win some, you lose some, and in the league you'll have slip-ups like this. It's not the end of the world, but I still have every reason to believe that we're likely to win the league. But we can't afford too many of those. These things happen. Teams come and play a blistering game. Their tactics suit our tactics, which proved to be wrong today. But I also have a strong suspicion some of our players had the World Cup on their mind. So that was the last game before the World Cup break. I will have plenty more content coming up during the World Cup, some football related, some non-football related, but it is looking at the moment, unless I can adjust my schedule to get to the League Cup game against Liverpool, that my next City vlog will sadly be in January. And I hope the football viewers amongst you consider viewing what I have in store for you in November and December. It'll be nice places, good food, lots of World Cup content, although I was close to going to Qatar, it looks as if I'm now not going there. So until then, Matanistas, don't forget to keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing, and most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.